graduation song, prayer and responsibility in the 24th principle. We are members of the Sabbath school every Sabbath morning. This is the way we learn God's word. In all of his commandments, we need his word to fight the devil who is trying to block our way. So come to Sabbath school. Worship you, oh Father. Mm -hmm. Father, help these that the words that we, that come from this Sabbath school lesson, oh Father, let it ring within our hearts, our mind, and let it saturate into our very souls, into the marrow of our bones, oh Yah, mm -hmm. that we carry it through, that we carry it with us all through the entire week. But Father, your words are perfect. Your words are true, yo Yah. And we thank you for everything that you're doing for us. Father, bless this house. Continue to grow this in this house, oh Yah. Continue to send workers. Continue to send those, oh Father, who want to work for you, Yah. Father, we thank you. We praise your holy name, Father. As we continue with this, as continue with this day, let your Holy Spirit just reign within us all, Father. Father, 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 help us be more like you, Father. Let us all have that one. Help us to have that one mind, that one like mind, Father. That you can come in, oh Yah, and just it just saturate, and just permeate this entire place. Father, bless our children, Father. They have the struggles of this world, oh Yah. But Yah, you have the you have the holy universe on your shoulders, Father. You control everything that's in it, Father. And we know that your perfection is great. So bless us, O Yah. We thank you, Father. These things we pray in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach. Amen. 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 The response of reading. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O God, that I owe to my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Teach me, O Lord, thy way of thy statutes, and I shall keep it until the end. Keep going. Oh, God, give me understanding, I and I shall get my whole heart. My whole heart. Make me to go in the path. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for then do I like. Incline my heart into thy testimonies and not to cut this. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy, thy way. My third, my third, my third, my third, my third, who is diverted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach from which I fear, for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have long after thy precepts, quicken me in thy righteousness. 
wherewith all shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. My son, forget not mine our Lord, and let my heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall thy add to thee. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. And now thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall deliver the rest. Anybody know what? Um, Principle of knowledge is about looking. Too late, I'm already in it. Another in advance, have a knowledge of something. No, I'm saying which 24 principle is for knowledge. Oh, which 24? All right, principle number one. The new bird, you must be born again. Principle number two. The Ten Commandments, commandments written by God's own finger. Principle number three. Divine healing. healing. Principle number four. The administration of feet washing and communion at the same service. Principle number five. Ties and the offering and the early duty of God. The approval of God. Principle number six. The eating of selected foods as holy people should. Principle number seven. Amen. Right, right through the book. Principle number eight. Absolute holiness through the love of God. Principle number nine. The resurrection of the dead. Principle number 10. The translation of the saints. Principle number 11. Principle number 12. Thousand years, years in the heaven and earth. earth. Principle number 13. Jesus is God and God is Jesus. Principle number 14. Baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Principle number 15. Water. <laughs> sacrament. Principle number 16. Water well, always in the need of salvation of the blood. Principle number 17. Say not against the Holy Ghost. Principle number 18. Your life and your life. Principle number 19 is our lesson. knowledge. Principle number 20. Praise the Jesus. Principle number 21. Right. Principle number 22. Science. Principle number 23. Jesus, our Passover forever. Christ. Principle number 24. Yeah, God's people. people. This time I will present to the teacher. He watched theirs. He's up in the booth. <laughs> so when he comes back. Thank wow. 
I hope everybody had a wonderful uh, week. I thank you, Father, for uh, allowing us to come together, each other, refresh on the Sabbath day, the day that my phone goes off when it comes to work, the day that our time clocks don't get checked in. The day that God has created from the beginning. And I thank y'all for just, I was thinking of his, his, his goodness and his mercy and how he has allowed us to be able to keep this day. And I'm like, just uh, some people work seven days a week, 12 hours a day, no rest. No rest at all, and I thank God that we decided to operate by His kingdom and His kingdom rules, which is, you know what? On the seventh day, I can't work on this day. I keep this day holy. I honor this day. Today's lesson, which will be for knowledge. Anybody have any, uh, I'll say for knowledge, which is awareness of something before it happens or exists. So I pray that we can get into some, 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 some deeper things today. Uh, might skip some of the bullets on the Sabbath school lesson just to get to uh, some of the more, uh, more me meteor topics. But when I say for knowledge, Awareness of something before it happens or exists. Has anybody in this room ever had a foreknowledge experience? Mm -hmm. yes. A lot of people say cotton. Dog, but I say, yeah, a lot of people say deja vu. Yes. They have a, a, a foreknowledge experience. Mm -hmm. yes. Like, uh, why did I why did I go this way instead of going on my normal route? Is that foreknowledge? Because it's a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, do we put foreknowledge in relationships? Nope. Do we go into a relationship and then we get insight? Yes. Is there, discernment. So it's foreknowledge the same as discernment. Well, no. Uh -uh, not at all. No. Because everybody don't have discernment. True. That's yeah, why. Foreknowledge either. Foreknowledge can be a million degrees. True. Uh, and that's what we're going to get into as far as foreknowledge because foreknowledge really comes when we read the scriptures. It's the prophets that the Father gave down that foreknowledge to do what? To change, so they can to change, so that they don't they don't get they don't find the punishment that's going to hit to them. To speak to us, but if you think about it, not to be funny, we do the same thing with our children, though. Uh, we give our children the things that we've had, so we have that. With, so it gives them the foreknowledge of the mistakes that we made, so they don't make the same mistakes. And the reason why we have the scriptures and why we have an advantage is because we can read. Okay. Yeah, if I do this, then this is going to happen. And I can read it. Like, okay, we in captivity because our disobedience. So that should give me some insight. Man, should I continue in a disobedience? Or actually, when we get insight of why we're uh, in our situation, it should make you want to draw back to the Father. It should make you be like, you know what? Yeah, I've inherited lies. Father, bring me back to you. So, yeah. And I also think um, in, in your knowledge and foresight that things can happen suddenly, and God will give you the foresight and foreknowledge to move away and not get into that. Okay. 
I put a foresight, the ability to predict or the actual predicting what will happen or what we need it in the future. Has y'all given us insight into our future? How? Through his word. But through his word, what is our future? Disobedience leads to death. Yes. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, because I've been, I thought you said in his word. I heard a Through his word, before knowledge, how does that, how do we benefit from that? Because we get, we can see, we can read what the prophets have spoken to us. And it's like, oh, okay, so we have a little insight. We have, we have ability to kind of read in between. Because Israel, they was getting, when the, when, when the prophets would speak to them, they was getting it firsthand. Y'all messed up. This is the judgment. If y'all don't return back to the most high, we had the opportunity to read and be like, okay, I don't want that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to uh, go after the false gods and I want to worship and I want to pick up these ways. Yes. Uh, can I read a, oh, yeah. a little bit out of Psalm 19 to kind of get you kind of goes to this psalm 19 starting at verse uh starting at verse eight well we're starting at verse seven it says the law of yah is perfect convert the soul the testimony of yah is sure making wise the simple the statutes of yah are right rejoicing the heart the commandment of yah is pure enlightening the eyes the fear of yah is clean enduring forever the judgments of yah are true and righteous altogether more to be desired than they are gold yeah more than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey of the honeycomb. Moreover, in verse 11, this is what I came here for. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. And in keeping them in there, there's great reward. So that's kind of what comes to my mind is like his statutes are like we're warned in through all of his word. So it gives us the awareness of something before it happens or exists. So we understand, will we ever be free? Will we always be in this state? So will we, uh, as a people, will we always be defeated? Mm -mm. Why? Because we have some insight from the core knowledge of the prophets letting us know Hey, you read Zephaniah, you read Zechariah, you see, hey, Israel's going to be redeemed, they're going to be restored. The land is going to be able to boast because he's going to bring the scattered back to the land. And people are going to look at towards their land. And we read how they're going to say, uh, out of Zion, the law come. They're going to say, let's go up to the mountain to, to worship. Why? Because things will shift. But that's why we can't get talk about a lot of lost people because people don't have hope if they don't understand the scriptures. If they don't understand prophecy. Like, why are we defeated? I ask myself, like, yo, why are you why are you tripping this way? Why are you letting this get to you if you don't understand that how good God is? And you know, at the end, we know the end. It's like the devil, okay? We know his end. He knows his end. But yet, sometimes we give a will, we give the, the adversary that little room. Yes? You talked about going to the mountain. I just read that this morning as I woke up in Isaiah 2. I read the three, Isaiah 2, 3, and 4, and it was talking about this in the last days going to the mountains. Yeah, just said it this morning. Zachariah speaks about it. Uh, but it's the, the knowledge that that we have everything is already you know, we just waiting for y'all to come back. You no, know, there's a lot of things that still gotta take place. 
before he comes back, but if you don't believe it, or if you don't have the foreknowledge of the insight of, okay, God's coming back, okay, this tribulation is going to take place, uh, uh, these wars are going to take place, uh, pestilence, destruction, but when these things take place, we have the insight to know uh, a thousand can drop, ten thousand can drop, but yet, this is my focus. But why do we have that focus? Because we have what knowledge. We have the we have the knowledge that we, we have, have the knowledge. knowledge. Yeah. And that's something that yes. I was gonna say also, uh, just in regards to your question, where we benefit from it as well is because as we look through the word, we can see everything as a cycle. We go through as a nation these periods of downfall and then uprising, you know, of um, destruction and then prosperity. Yeah. And because he declares the end from the beginning, we know, okay, when we have down, when we have fallen down, we also have instruction because he declares the end from the beginning. Because uh, I'm thinking even outside of the prophets, where it states in what? Second Chron First Chronicles 7, 14 or Second Chronicles? Uh, whichever one it is, but my people who are called by my name would just humble themselves and pray to my face and turn away from your wicked ways, then I'll heal the land. So we have instruction, no matter what stage of the cycle that we're in. Yeah, we have instructions because of that word being declared from the beginning about the end. Listen, when you fall down, turn back. So, something has happened and something is wrong. Yes. So we benefit from it from the foreknowledge in that way because the foreknowledge also foretells of the end because it's a continuous cycle that we have been through. That's right. I, I, I understand what she's saying, but I feel like sometimes it's necessary to fall. Because when you fall, you no longer have fear. But sometimes it's the only way you can overcome fear is you fall. Because even Jesus failed. When he let Judas, you know, betray him, he had to fall to rise. So sometimes mm -hmm. the fall is some breaking you. For you to shed some of your natural. Because we, we as humans are scared. We have anxieties. We have we get afraid easily. We, we when God starts showing you miracles, you're afraid. So I think sometimes we have to. Well, that, I, I'm I'm gonna chime in on this too as well. Um, no, we can't say anything about your who's failing because then for him to fail, he'd have to be he he would have to be imperfect. He would have to be a human. But see, the thing is. He already had knowledge because his father had already told him of what was going to happen. It wasn't that he failed. He was already, he, he knew his destiny already. He already had the foreknowledge of what's going to have to happen to himself. The, the, the Savior doesn't, he didn't fall. Not one time had he ever failed. The scripture clearly tells us that he was tempted on all points, just like we were, and he did not fall. So therefore, he didn't fail. Um, then secondly, to add into what you were saying, I understand that, you know, sometimes people do have to fall. That's why the scripture we're talking about, like last week, and uh, well, I don't think you were last week, but the sermon that the uh, bishop gave last week, and he gave the example of the fig tree in the garden that wasn't blooming, that wasn't producing fruit. And he says, tear it down, get rid of it. And the gardener said, let me, do, let me do this. Let me dig around the roots. Let me dung it first. Then if it doesn't produce fruit, then you can tear it out. See, but see, the thing is, the sometimes I agree, sometimes you have to grow through crap in order to bloom. Okay, so, but but to say the Messiah fell, uh -uh. not one time, yeah. but he mean? died because he had to. Was that wasn't a fall. That's not, That's not that was not a fall. He knew his destiny because see, his father was caught up on a word. You don't understand what he Call it the word fall. I'm, I'm not talking about falling as he didn't know what he was doing. He's the Messiah. He's God. God. He died to human flesh and rose as God. Well, you don't know what you're saying now, so you have to elaborate on what you mean. Well, just say fall. That's all. Yeah, fall. Yeah, you say fall. That's 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 the fall is to see it. <laughs> yeah. 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 To fall is to sin, and, and, and for us to fall is to sin. It means yes. we, fall, 
when we fall out of grace, we have sinned. When we fall, when we have fallen before others, we have done something to somebody else. To fall is to sin. It's not, it's not, um, it's not like you trip. It's not an accident. Whenever we fall, we have we have fallen short of his glory. We have fallen short of his grace. That's because we've done something wrong. And the things that we do wrong is what he always says is sin. So therefore, we can't he, the, the Messiah cannot fall. He has no sin in him. Therefore, he was not born of sin, he was not born into sin. There is no sin in him. He cannot fall. He allowed things to happen because this is what was necessary for us to be able to come into the, uh, the it, 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 for us to be able to come into his might and into his glory and, and to be and to fall into his grace and his and, and, and his love because he had to do these things. He gave of himself. He did not fall. There's no fall in him ever. You know, I would say this. He did show his fleshly side when he asked for that cup to be taken from him. So we have to, if you was like, uh, I'm saying uh, just straight spirit, but he knew what was about to take place. And when you talk about the prayer, I mean, how many of we was about to go to trial for anything? Who's not going to pray and be like, yo, Father, let's take this. I know I did. So, <laughs> not to say he, he Say he was he was tempted. He was tempted. He was tempted, but even he had minister angels come to him to strip him. So that shows you the flesh part, the fleshly being of him. But one thing you can say is he fulfilled his assignment. So that's what you can say. Hey, because he could have been like, you know what? Like he said, I could have called down a legion of angels right now. And in the flesh, if I had that power of, if I come on ox real quick to get me out of this situation, and I'm about to suffer, who would not pick up their phone like, hey, because I don't see what they're about to do to me. I know it's going to take place. So it shows, it shows that how Yahusha, yes, he was in the flesh, but even when they had ministering angels come and minister to him, they're stripping him to, so he can get up in their prayer, like, all right, all right, let's do this. Is it how the Father has he not done that to us? Yesterday, I was with my uh, Shire and I was coming some stuff, and I'm like really tripping off some things. But you know, so when I walked away, I'm like, man, it's what happened. It's like, it's whatever. That's the ministering, because you'd be like, man, I'm just concerned about this issue, this issue. How am I going to get out? Man, I, you know, it's your hands. And you can say it's in your hands, mm -hmm. but then they should be like, hey, yes, it's, it's nothing you did wrong. It's, and you know, you're like, okay. I told Tim, I said, yeah, man, I, I feel good. And before I got home, I received a random, random blessing. <laughs> when I said a random blessing, uh, it came from somewhere. It wasn't like a, it wasn't a client. It was a random blessing that was like, before I, I got home, I don't see no like, I get home like, Tiff, you ain't gonna believe this. <laughs> but it's like, when you truly, truly just, I was like, yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm strong and oh, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm giving to the most high, but yeah, it's still in me. It's still, and then as you know it, that last bit of push at the 12th hour, yeah, I was like, all right, I'm about to send, because you just, you know, talk to your brothers this week, but I'm about to send one more word to just, just to get you over, just to put you over. It's, all right, yeah, you ready for it. But for not, yes. Being the lamb, he took away the sins of the world. Yes. But he took away the sins. He, uh, he the, the, we go back to this time of the past. So, uh, the sacrifices, period. Sacrifices took away. I see him sacrifice. I see him sacrifice. I see him bring this forth. 
but even before then, before the knowledge of the Most High, he already knew. It's like when he talked to Abraham, what did he tell Abraham about his seed? It's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be greater than the uh, the, the stars in heaven. It's gonna be more than the stars. They're gonna be 400 years in the land that's not their home. What else he say? They're gonna be something. Step back. Rebellious. So he already knew I can I'm not gonna have enough cattle. To continue sacrificing. <laughs> so eventually, so before the 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 before we was born, before Isaac was dead, before he was like, look, this is gonna be the land that's gonna be slain. Before what? Before the foundation of the earth. So y'all's foreknowledge really kicks in. Even I was just thinking, y'all's foreknowledge. Dealing with Noah, how was foreknowledge there? I was going to say he was able to make preparation that led to salvation. Because without the foreknowledge, nobody would have had one. All would have perished. Yeah. And it's important that something before it happens or exists. Did, did rain exist? Nope, not before then. But yet, he made provisions to give us some insight. Insight that everybody else that was just doing their own thing didn't have, didn't have credit to. Uh, I was talking about insider trading, which is illegal, but, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, but insider trading is you have insight. Hey, this is about to crash. Sell your stocks. Mm -hmm. Or buy into all of that right now because in the future this is going to. So you're dealing with, hey, build this boat. Okay. And, and I want you to take the animals. And would that not seem strange? Mm -hmm. Is it not strange when people look at it and say, that was a special Saturday? Or y'all don't keep feast days and I mean holiday, I mean holidays and I keep feast days and you telling people, hey y'all better keep these days and you telling people and yet people still right. they're rejecting you. Doing why? Because eventually destruction is gonna come. And guess what? They're gonna be saying, Lord, Lord. They're gonna be saying, let me. It's gonna be Hebrews trying to. Grab onto our our our, our coattails. Like, look, <laughs> I'm just gonna. I don't go to the club, but you know, uh, you go to the club, and I want to slide in with you. That's right. And so that's what you have to. Uh, we just have to have foreknowledge. Uh, you go for Noah, Abraham. How is that foreknowledge with Abraham? A lot happened with Abraham. I was gonna say one example is like with Sodom and Gomorrah. Like there's the conversation that happens where it's like, should we tell Abraham what we're about to do? What we're even here for? And they tell Abraham, you know, what's about to happen. So. Like he had the foreknowledge of what was going to happen to Sodom and Gomorrah before they even knew what was going to happen to him. That's not powerful. Yes. I was going to say also foreknowledge because God had given him was not only for him but for the entire nation because if he did not have faith in that foreknowledge that God had bestowed upon him. He would not have been the father of many nations. He would not have trusted even through the proposed sacrifice of Isaac because that came up on the table. Like, you know, you think good and well, like, okay, God promised me this child. This one in particular is the one who promised me. And now I got to sacrifice what you said. My seed was going to be, you know what? You have always kept your word. So I'm going to trust you through this as well as through 
something else because I know if you take this child, you can give me another one. You can still make me the father of many nations, however you choose to. It's just back and back off what she said. He had the foreknowledge that God had always been faithful that he was going to provide a lamb just like he always had. Mm -hmm. So that's right. Did we mention about the slavery, the bondage for 400 years, the technology of that? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, going in. Yeah. But uh, they, they were going to come out with possessions and then they were going to, you know, mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time, but then they're going to be able to come out, which I feel like was kind of a reassurance and comfort, comforting to Abraham, you know, because he was going to be dead by that time. But he let him know that no matter what, yeah, they're going to be in bondage, but I'm going to bring them out, you know. In which, uh, once again, it gives us hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we're not out here just like, uh, okay. What's they say? Are we just is Israel just homeborn slaves? Right. Are, are you just are we just here for when we ever? And he talks about how we would be the head and not, not the, the tail. tail. Mm -hmm. If so he gives us these four knowledge of you will be blessed. It's not about uh, what, how much you give, because I, I was really, I was listening to one of my brothers speak, and he said, you know, there's my new offer, and he was like, uh, the blessings come through how much you give. And I'm like, you know better. <laughs> but uh, but Yah gives us the foreknowledge. He gives us the insight of you want to be blessed. You want to be blessed in the city. You want to be blessed. This is what you do, and still we still struggle with that. But yes, and then also with that uh, with his foreknowledge, he's able to ask. We even knew there was going to be a Messiah. She was still rejected. So we have foreknowledge and we just, we, so we have, to thank, we have to be thankful in this room that we're counted up the Noah's and the Abraham's because right. we believe. I'm like, God is so good to, to us to the point that, you know, it's going to be a room. I want to be in that I want to be, I mean, I mean, I would love for it because it's this desire to go inside that all of us be saved. Yes. But people still want to reject him. With Abraham, the foreknowledge. You talk about the seed. And sometimes we can receive a word and we act on it because we think it should happen right then and there. Yeah. So what did Abraham do? He got the gun. Yeah. Had another kid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Before the most high even gave him the kid that was supposed to come from his wife. And sometimes we can get something, we can get a word from the father, and we had jumped the gun thinking, I learned that. I, I learned that uh 
if I'd have given you something, and it was years ago, but you know, your baby, you started to hear from the father, and you're like, okay. You don't ask him when, you don't ask him uh, <laughs> the, the, the parts, everything you just just take off. You just take off. And now learn. Okay. Yeah, all right. Father, all right, now you put it in my heart. Now I'm gonna act when you tell me to move, but let me let me start building the art now. Mm. Let me start preparing myself, but let's don't go and start. So uh, Abraham. So he told Abraham to see, he told him about Isaac. Uh Then you take, and I'm just thinking the, the, the four nights of Yah, how his, his plan, because he knows the, the, the end from the beginning, the beginning to the end. Isaac has to, has Jacob. Jacob comes to Israel. Israel. Right. Israel has the 12 sons. You take Joseph. Joseph has a dream. Joseph is sold. Joseph's in Potiphar's house. Joseph's in prison. Joseph, they ask him, hey, interpret this dream. He like, yo, this dream's why I'm in the first place. <laughs> but it's like, but he has to interpret this dream. And now he's in the palace. Now he's head of everything in Pharaoh in the um, in Pharaoh's in Egypt. Kingdom. I mean he was like Absolute second control. Second command Pharaoh's is chilling. Why? Because dude, yo, and they had to know. But once again, so he gets the insight of hey seven years of family it's gonna come. With that, this is going to affect everybody, but it all goes back to the foreknowledge of Yah and his election of who he had chosen in the beginning. So now he's taking Israel, you know, they chilling and he's chilling and yo, go up there and see what y'all can do. Get some food, get something. Yes. Regards to what you're talking about before now, he was 17. Joseph was 17 when he was sold to the Midianites and then sold to go to Egypt. So he had the foreknowledge that all of his brethren, including his parents, through his dream, would have to come right. out of him. Mm -hmm. Speaking right back to what you had said, we get there or we get this word, we might even get the, the end picture. The most high gave them that end picture because that's the end of it. They're going to have to come and bow down to you and, and humble themselves to you, as they did. But we don't wait on the development of it. And so he ran off. Hey, guess what's going to happen to me? Y'all going to have to do this. Y'all going to have to do that. And da, 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 da. Yeah, so he was right, got on the entire nerves because he kept exalting himself over his breath. Because as you got to think about in the story, that's the argument that it's even his father had to do him. So what you think you got to do? over us yeah so that if he didn't wait on the development now he had to go through this process of being humble being in slavery or uh in bondage or in the prison house he had to go through this process of being humble and let the most high blossom or develop that leadership to where through that additional foreknowledge of the famine now you see why they're going to have to come to you, not because you're great, but because I'm going to work a thing in this land and all over the place. And it's not for you who you are, Joseph. It's for, it's to, as he said out of his own town, it's to save a great. That's right. Jason. I mean, she kind of, I was going to say that, like, I ain't humble. Like, I always think about the Sadducees and the Pharisees how they knew the Torah front and back. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they had some foreknowledge of certain things that they knew, but they had the Messiah right there in front of them and they didn't know who he was. Yeah. 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 
her saying that makes me think about the situation with, with Jacob in the first place. Uh -huh. with how he ends up having to go to Laban based off of his mother's some, some foreknowledge that the mother gave that his mother received when she had them in the womb. That's right. But like the, the issue is that it has to go a whole completely different way and he has to suffer behind this decision because this is not the way that the most high said that it was going to go. This was y'all putting y'all spin on it and y'all putting y'all yeah, plan to right. to this to say let, let me help you alone yeah. well it must be that this is how you want this to happen when no just sit back and acknowledge him right and he'll direct your path if any if he says something is going to come to pass and you don't think you, you looking and saying oh well how is this going to happen well how about you go and ask him instead of doing like Abraham doing like like Rebecca did doing you know like even with Joseph is a great example. Like he, he receives his foreknowledge, but like she said, instead of being humble and waiting for it to, to happen, now he's exalting himself and creating a wedge between him and his brothers. Yeah, which caused him to do that. Yes, sis. Okay, he only to say something second time. <laughs> you know it's characteristic I always have <laughs> who at 17 is hungry if you got this four dollars at 17 that things are going to die you you're going to be hungry you're going to be like I'm awesome <laughs> I mean I'm just going to give him a little bit of credit like he got some he got a good dream very young yeah. And you know I take it. How many of us get good drink jug and don't want to take it? Oh, I do. I'm going to get it. We don't say it. We just keep it to yourself. Some dreams, because some folks don't know how to have it. I will tell it to my sister law, but I might not tell it to the son. Everybody or somebody else. Yeah. And he's my only son. I don't help him. But he may not have him. You know, the way that he, the, 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 the dreams that he was given, and the way he handled it is the reason because see the most high gave it to him because he knew he was what he was a kid he was going to do this and this was going to set forth everything in order for this to happen because of his immaturity because what, what did they talk about when what was this what's the scripture say about joseph he was spoiled everything was given to him he didn't have to work he didn't have to do, the only thing he had to do was go check up on his brothers every night and then he came back a six stone you know <laughs> you know right so so <laughs> but, but, still, but still and everything but, but still and, and all the most high knew that he was going to use this young immature individual to, to, to further to further his cause and make his most happen. So he, he the most I know what he's doing. He just it's just it's, okay. he always knows what he's doing. He always because he he's 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 been he, he knows the past as well as the future. He knows exactly what we're going to do. I, I, we disobey with consequences. Don't think that the most high don't know that this was not going to happen. He had foreknowledge these things are going to happen. And yet you still went and did your thing and then you lost your life or you or, or you or you got really sick or you got hurt or whatever. But the thing is, he knew. So you can't sit there and tell him that hey, you can't sit there and say that hey, he didn't want this to happen. He may not want it to happen, but guess what? He's not gonna stop it from being stupid. Okay. Ooh, just to, just to jump and going back on what you're saying, like he absolutely, and just because he knows of it, he's such a um, a merciful and wonderful Allah of God because he even obeys his own word. He gives us the choice to do what it is that we're gonna do, knowing full well. Okay, they're gonna do this, man. They're gonna, they're gonna run out with this. He's not gonna stand in not every time. And say, okay, I'm gonna pull you about this. No, because we have to absolutely suffer the consequences of those mm -hmm. things we choose because we have to learn. Now, I heard this. Sometimes we have to fall in order to learn, in order to grow. We have to learn to stole the top so that we don't touch it. So that we can fire will burn you. 
so that we can learn the difference because of, between sorry, good and evil. Who said, I've set before you this day life and death. Choose you life as a commandment. So just sorry, just going off. No, no, no that's good. On the tangent, you know. That's good. So, sir, I appreciate you because he absolutely is a, a God that follows his own word. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but like you is vanity. You know that. We we think we're all that. We always well, did tell somebody to check us. But he says in one chapter of Hebrews, he shows his love through his correction. Yes. Right. So who ever heard of a child that's not corrected by his father? Yeah. And if he's not corrected as a as a, the others are. Then he's illegitimate. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. So we don't want to be illegitimate children of the Most High. We want to be his children. And he, never, he gave that example all through Scripture. When you jack me, I'm going to jack you more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, when you mess up with me, your outcome is not going to be pleasant. It's always the or else with the Most High. Come on. That's the thing, most humans get twisted because they think it's an unconditional God. He is very conditional. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's the thing. Um, they think of the God of love and the you know, as if he had anything. It's just, you can go, no, it's very conditional. David said it's a horrible thing to fall in the hands of a, of a, of a, of a terrible God. That's what he said. He said that himself. Terrible. Terrible. Kills and humiliates. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
they still operating the other gods, but while they in here, I'm going to teach them where I'm taking y'all. Everybody can't go unless y'all, it's like you be in the car, if y'all gonna act right, we're not gonna go. Gonna turn this car back around. Turn this car back around. <laughs> and it's the same <laughs> thing. It's like, <laughs> they they the one is he like look if y'all don't do this I'm not going to make it to this land and what do we do we kept turning around mm -hmm. and around and around y'all still for forty years we we almost there and we messed up again so what we're going this trip back again and it's that that we talk about circles but it, it was a circle so we go from to get to the land, he gave us the foreknowledge. We didn't know what the land had, what exists, what that's why they had the, the, the spires go out. But we you know, we don't know what we're going to see. We just trusting an uh, Elohim that we did not know. Moses said, oh, who, who should I tell him? Who, who sent him? So now he got to tell the people, hey, he's going to bring y'all out that rejoice. And do this with the blood on the door. You see all this stuff going on. You see what's going on, and nothing is touching you all. So you would think right there, you're like, you know what? Moses, whatever you say, because you don't get us out of here. The death angel, you hear the cries, you see the pestilence, you see all this stuff, and it's not, as long as we keep your word, we are live. And that goes back from the beginning. It always goes back. Keep this word and you'll live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's a true foreknowledge for us. That's a true insight. Man, if I keep the word, I'll live. You already said life and death. So Israel makes it to the land. He gave us the foreknowledge. This is how you're gonna treat your brothers, this is how you're gonna treat your neighbors. This is hey, we want to start a community. And this is how you're gonna, hey, you can't if you. If you got an eye with your brother, his ox is, is down, guess what? You go help your brother get that ox up. Mm -hmm. He gives us all these, all these, 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 he gives us Torah. This is how you, as a matter of fact, y'all, when y'all left, and all these gods, don't do this. He's giving us insight because if y'all do this, it's going to make me jealous. It's going to make me an uh, angry Elliot. I've been showing y'all much love. And we had insight. Man, Father, he heard us. Who are we? Because here we are. I mean, majority of the ones that was in Egypt that grew up into that, that bondage, you are always going to have your head down. You don't know what's up. You don't know. But here comes, maybe not. Yo, man, the Elohim, the, the one that created, and he's looking on me, and he's raising my head up. He's showing me favor. Because a lot of times in, in, in the city, a lot of times, a lot of our youth, all they need is someone to just lift their head up. Lift their head up, yes, sir. Just someone to be like, I got you. I can't depend on my mama. I can't depend on my dad. I can't depend on... We got you, most high has you. So from just the just the humbleness of how the father humbled us, once again, we was humble. And that's why when he talks about um, but even when he talks about when we deal with uh, uh to Deuteronomy, he talks about uh do not hate uh the Egyptians or Esau. Esau because he's your brother. Because your brother, and right. He was, the strangers, you was one strangers. Strangers, you were one stranger in their land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once again, he humbles us to what? Man, I can't become up here. I can't, I can't look down at the other nations because we done arrived and we got a little, little bit of money. I mean, I know how it is when income tax come. Sometimes yeah, give me those Air Jordans and, and but that's how our people think. Like mm -hmm. we become 
come and it's like I'm going to the club with the freshest outfit. I want to buy everybody a drink because I got this free money and it makes us puffed up. Mm -hmm. But y'all has to bring you down, bring us down, sir. Because every time we get puffed up, it's impossible for us to bring forth Torah. And we can't keep his commands when we're hiding. So thus, every time we don't keep his commands, he forcefully humbles those that will be humble, and let's just perish. All right. Proverbs 7. Right? Yeah. That's what it talks about. He says, you know, like, I don't want to be so rich that. I'll forget you, you know, but I don't want to be so poor that I steal and bring shame to your name. Like it's that middle ground. Yes. Often with the father where he wants us to be like, like just seeing him and being thankful to him. That's why we have to, Paul talks about how we have to be, uh, be content. Make sure we're the same if things are good, the same if things are bad. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 8 chapter, he speaks to that very point. He said, that into your new land, you build your big houses, your silver and gold and priests, you know, your flock and herd, multiply. If you forget me, you saw what I did to the Egyptians. Come on, you don't get the same. <laughs> <laughs> just land back and off what well, Bishop is saying because he tells us flat out in multiple places. Matter of fact, he says, Jacob, thou worm. He called Jacob a worm. That's what we are to him, basically. But he also says uh, multiple times, I didn't drive out the other nations because you are so great. Matter of fact, you are the least. That said that. Mm -hmm. I did not drive out the nations because you were so wonderful. No, I drove them out because of the atrocities that they were committing yeah. in yeah. the yeah. land. So he took us to the wilderness, 40 years, forcefully humbling us, as in our forefathers, forcefully humbling us, teaching us his ways and what he prefers. In other ways, he says, did I not, I didn't speak to your forefathers about having many sacrifices before my face. I didn't reprove them for that. I was teaching them what my ways in the wilderness. That's why we stayed out there so long because we had to learn of him. It don't come overnight. It was a three-day trip turned 40 years. <laughs> we had to figure it out. What did he like? What did he not like? What did he say do? What did he say don't do? Yeah. You know, so when we go, regardless of the foreknowledge that we have, when we sit here and, and, and purposefully disregard the foreknowledge because who said it that the, the Pharisees they even had the foreknowledge. It was in the law that Moshe sent out, I will raise up one from among your brethren. And they still Tell did not acknowledge Yahweh when he had. You know? So they we have to stay in a place of humility because regardless, of, if we choose not to acknowledge the foreknowledge, he gonna do to us just like he did to the Egyptians. He gonna do to us just like he did to Sodom and Gomorrah. He gonna do to us just like. Because most of us will lose them as soon as we get in. That's why I believe we have to stay in a humble state. Yes. Just so our salvation so we can be saved. Look what was happening to the poor Lord in Ukraine. You want to take something over, but you want to kill off everybody. It can happen to the U.S. See, people think that they're always so much better and that not going to happen to us. How do you know? So, you know what, like you say, it's about praying. Things are going to happen. You all, you know, I just know that. But you're going to go through a tunnel, but you're going to get out on the other side. You know what, I still think a little bit is going to be shaken maybe to the U.S., maybe not enough, but it's going to put people on their, on their ear to let them know that there is a God. Because I think some people out here think that they're God. But Poland and Ukraine, they, they, they don't deserve that. You know, you just lost the boom. I'm following 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 the boom
you can take advantage of the opportunity to not only experience life, but life everlasting. If you can grasp hold of foreknowledge, it's not foreknowledge alone is not the revelation of that foreknowledge. It's one thing to, to give words, another thing for the understanding of that word to be revealed unto you. That's why the prophets at one time, prophets prophesied, prophets were once called seers yes. because they get vision through their relationship with the Most High, not just what's going on now, but what's to come. We need to be humble so we can receive the revelation of the point right. that we might attain life and life of the rest. Can I just read what I read this point? Because it's tying so much into this lesson. Thank you. Where are you reading from? Isaiah, start at Isaiah 2. Isaiah 1. 2. two. Says the word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of David. He will teach us his ways. And we shall walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have forsaken your people, the house of Jacob, because they are filled with eastern ways. They are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they are pleased with the children of Thornus. Mm -hmm. Their land is also full of silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Mm -hmm. Their land is also full of horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Mm -hmm. Their land is also full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, mm -hmm. that which their own fingers have made. People bow down, and each man humble himself. Therefore, do not forgive them. Forgive them. Enter into the rock and hide into, in the dust from the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humble. The haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Mm -hmm. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall come upon everything proud and lofty, mm -hmm. upon everything lifted up, mm -hmm. and it shall be brought low. Amen. Upon mm -hmm. all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, upon every high tower, and upon every fortified wall, mm -hmm. upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the beautiful sloops. The loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be brought low. Mm -hmm. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day, but the idols he shall utterly abolish. Mm -hmm. They shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth mm -hmm. from the terror of the Lord mm -hmm. and the glory of his majesty when he arises to shake the earth mightily. Mm -hmm. In that day, a man will cast away his idols of silver and his idols of gold which they made each for himself to worship, to the moles and bats, to go into the cliffs of the rocks, and into the crag of the rugged rocks, from the terror of the Lord, from the glory of his majesty. When he arrives, to shake the earth mightily, sever yourselves from such a man, whose breath is in his nostrils, for a blood account. If I read three and four. If y'all want to read three and four, it's about the same as two, but it's very relative. It's about that thing you say. He's going to humble every little bit of credit. <laughs> He's going to read that. He's going to. I'm sorry. All right, uh, Sister Patricia. Oh, I just want to. Uh, 
to say that we're still a stiff naked people and operating in the uh, wilderness. And it's, it's just a trick of the enemy because he, no matter what you tell people, they don't want to believe and they don't want to read the Bible. They want to like all the things of the world, like Christmas, Easter, those mm -hmm. kind of things. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we're still operating in uh, the wilderness. And it is the trick of the enemy. And we have to stay in the word. I uh, last weekend was invited to a family function that was being held in a club. Mm -hmm. And so I tell my girlfriend, I can't go in the club for any reason. I don't care if y'all rented it out or what for any reason. And you know, she also told me, well, it'll be after sundown, you know, so I can still go. And she doesn't drink, so I don't have to drink either. But that's why you have to stay in the word. I mean, because I could have gone, but like I told her, for, for no reason can I go into a club. And it doesn't matter if it's after sundown and it's over, the, you know, the Sabbath is over. It doesn't matter. It's still in the club. They're going to be drinking and doing mm -hmm. whatever else. And that's temptation that could lead to something else. You know, or some violence or anything. Yeah, what just awesome. happened downtown. Yeah, awesome. So you have to say in the word to be strengthened. Yes. Which he gives you foresight for. Yes. I think one of the, the biggest pieces of the, the foresight is like they were saying earlier, he's telling you about his ways and mm -hmm. what you have to do to please him. Because his judgment is the same, and that's yeah. already been set in stone. See what I'm saying? So it's like He's, he's in Romans chapter three, Paul even goes into detail about that, where he talks about what advantage is, is it to the circumcision? Well, much in every way, because to them, they have the oracles of Elohim. They know what is required for that day that's to come, right? Like, mm -hmm. But it's coming regardless of if you know it or not. Like he's telling you already what he's what his plan is and what he's going to do. And he's giving his mercy is giving you a chance to get on the right side of it. Romans chapter 11 he goes into detail about that, right? Where he talks about the the natural branches versus the grafted in branches. Right. And he's like letting the grafted in branches know, like, don't be boastful and don't get surprised exactly. because the same reason that I cut off the natural branches, I'm gonna do the same to you. Like I'm the same across the board. Like mm -hmm. it's not a he's not partial. Right. He's not, you know, he's the same across the board, regardless. It's it's really about get on the right side with him yeah. versus him getting on the right side with you. That's right. It's it's funny that this is like the lesson I'm walking into because uh yesterday uh, my husband's family had like a get together. He's like, oh, I'm gonna stop by before sundown and I would come home and I'm like, oh okay. I said, I'm I say because like I know like before Shabbat, like spirits are roaming, you know, and I'm thinking like I know something gonna happen to y'all. I kid you not, he pulled up in the driveway and they called him because all the things in his face like, See what like I knew that to go. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I know what was going to happen. And lo and behold, I'm like, it's the savage. Like, because he's like, I need to go help my family. I said, you need to get your buddy. I know that. They got the experience on their neighbors. Right. I know savage. They're like, don't do nothing. Don't walk up something that fancy. They want to go to jail. Back, I was better off. Yeah, I was better off. We had graves in Egypt. <laughs> and it's like when the Father brings us out of certain things, uh -huh. why do we look back okay. and be like, I just want to just chase and see how strong I am. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to, I'll be all right because I believe this word. And those, those, those spirits are waiting. The adversary is waiting for you to make that decision. Because he's like, man, we're going to have seven. We're going to have 7,000. 
<laughs> right. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, even even Yahusha gave a prime example when uh, when the people were trying to make a, they were trying to do a burial on this on the Shabbat, and they're like, "Let us go help them bury." You're like, "No, let the dead bury the dead. You leave the people right where they are. Uh, you're not supposed to be with them. You're supposed to be right here where you were, right here with me, right where you belong. You don't belong over there. So whenever you know that you are separated, yes. you stay away from it. It's just that simple. If you know that, that's like a certain people who I grew up with. Don't get me wrong. I love y'all to death. I love you to life, actually. Okay. But guess what? I know what you're into. I know I'm not to take my tail over there because I know there's always that little thing. It's in, as safe as we are, there's always that one little creature that sits in the back hidden and then they want to be whispering in your ear when you get around that nonsense. <laughs> you know? So it's, I mean, it, it, I mean, and, and it's not that you can't, it's not that we can't defeat that creature or, 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 or we can't uh, defeat the creature. It's the issue. We don't want that creature to even come. You know? So you don't put yourself in that position. You ain't got to face that creature. You ain't got to face that old man. Because old man, I mean, don't get me wrong. They, they, the old man, he, he's still there. He just, he's way in the back. Just, sitting, just waiting for you to sit up and just make a dumb idea. Make it make a dumb mistake. So he come whispering to you. The wrong thing to do. He's still there. So... It's funny you should mention it. Let the dead bury the dead. Mm -hmm. With my girlfriend Carolyn, who is now coming to the knowledge of the Sabbath like I am, uh, she has an aunt who passed away, and the funeral is today. And so she was going to she go to Georgia with my brother, but she called and asked me about it, and I said, "Well." I don't think we're supposed to go to funerals on the on the Saturday. And that's when I said, Jesus said that the dead bury the dead. I believe that's what that means. Mm -hmm. And so she told her family and they jumped all over her. I mean, they're not even talking right now because she didn't want to go to this funeral today. You know, she's got to stay in the word, and, and you know, we prayed about it. But you know, it's your family's not going to be there with you when you stand before the Lord. That's right. So you stand on your own. Do what He wants us to do. I said, you pray about it, but I don't think He's going to tell you to go to that funeral. And she didn't go. She didn't go. That's like my brothers. My brothers tried. My brothers tried to have my mother's funeral on the Sabbath, and I just like I told them, do what you want. Guess what? I'm going to be. I'm not going to be here. You hold that. You hold that funeral on the Shabbat if you want to. I'm going to be in the temple. My daughter's going to be in the temple. My children who are with me are going to be in the temple. We're not coming to. I said I don't care that it is my mother. She's not in there anyway. That's just her body. She's sleeping. She's sleeping, waiting for the trumpets to sound. So therefore, you sit up having a, having a uh, having a funeral on the Shabbat. It doesn't bother me. You do what you want because you are you going to do what you want. I've sit up and I've, I've, I've lived this life. I've been an example for you. I've tried to tell you where you're going wrong. Well, if you don't want to listen to it or not, that's just on you. And you so, gave her flowers while she was living. Always. But you know what? If family really loved and respected your beliefs, if they really want you yeah, to, if they really want you to attend these things, they can have them at sundown. They can do a funeral. There's no law that says you have to have a funeral for the day. That's right. Right. Because a lot of times they just bury people. Right. They want you at the wedding. They will have a late wedding. That's normal right. after sundown. You know, so mm -hmm. things it can work. It can be done on a Saturday as long as it's not going to be the sun. Well, but when the sun go down, and take it Sunday. I was just kind of, kind of going to say that. December guards to the uh, uh, guards to. Uh, just in regards to everything everybody else is saying, um, and when the elder brought up the example of Yahushua, he also he did give that example of saying, let the dead bury the dead, but he also gave an example and he was the fulfillment of the law. So that don't mean he came and did away with anything. He walked it out to perfection and showed us how to do it so that mm -hmm. when certain situations arise, we have answer to give in those situations. Yes. And we have example to pull from in those situations. So somebody else brought up when he was tempted upon the mount, he even gave the situation. And he, you, you're talking about when he was tempted on the mount and he could have, you know, called all kind of, called his homeboys and said, 
If Yahusha was wise enough to say, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the most high thy power, it does not, most high thy Lord, most high thy God, it don't matter what we have on our side as far as backup is concerned, because that mm -hmm. backup is only going to come when we're in full obedience unto the most right. high. Not when we're, oh, I'm strong enough to do this, so let me go ahead and test the boards. Oh, no, I can handle that. So let me go ahead and you know, run out. And, yeah, okay. That's when your back backup goes way back. <laughs> that backup comes when you're in obedience. That's you know, when we're just trying to go off our own strength. But even, even that, like, where he said, like the day we're in the day, like he was should not rise until after the Sabbath was over. Come on, so he didn't, like, even in that, that was an example of how you're not supposed to deal with the day of the That's not correct, that's, that's, the the that's not correct. No, he's the Lord of the He's Lord of the Shabbat. He rose on his time, on his day. On his day. Okay. See, people get a mistake. See, people want to separate and think that the Sabbath that was referred to when they when they was taking him down off the cross, they want to think that there was a seven day Sabbath. There was not. It was the first day of unleavened bread. That was a Sabbath that they took him down off the cross. It was not the seven day Sabbath. That was the fourteenth. That was he had to be yeah he had to be he had to be married before sundown on the fifteenth. See, people think it's a seven day seven, and it's not. We're going to get it together. Yes, it is. Yeah. So, so I think that that's what you just said is another one of the keys, and it goes back to what the child was saying you. earlier about just because you have foreknowledge of something, it doesn't mean that you had a revelation of that foreknowledge. Like, that's where it comes back to the spirit. Like if you ever notice when the prophets received the word, it would say the spirit of Yah came upon them. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, so like that that part of it is the element. Like even with when we go back to the beginning with Adam and Eve, right? They had the foreknowledge of if you eat of this tree, you're going to you're die. going to die. Yes, sir. They knew that. But the adversary comes in to test it to see well how much of this foreknowledge do you really know? Right? Do you really believe? Right? Do you yourself believe? What did he say? Right? She chops it up when she, and then next thing you know, he appealed to her flesh. And, and, and when I say appeal to her flesh, I mean that her desire. Right. right? He Absolutely. appealed to her desire. I should clear, clear that up. He appealed to her desire. And next thing you know, she, we all still reaping the, 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 the benefits, the wages of that to this day. Right. So, right. like, well, well, you know what I was meaning. Yeah. <laughs> re suffering the repercussions. Yeah. But, but exactly what he was saying, Brother Kwan was saying, saying, you have to consider this too. She had never met the devil before. She had never met never had an interaction with the devil before. Oh. I'm she never, that was something new. All their information came directly from y'all. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, here's some more information from something else. And, and y'all have to consider if he has so much influence that he could take a third of the heavenly hosts from their original state, what chance would we have with Satan without his authority? Just like he did the prophets, all those leaders. He gave them an anointing to deal with the situation. And even with that, some of them couldn't maintain mm -hmm. that much authority without getting high-minded and uplifted and doing their own thing. Right. And they failed. I mean, they really erred. Many of them really erred mm -hmm. because they said, oh, I'm the king. Mm -hmm. And he told them, do not emulate those folks that in the nations I'm sending you to. Yeah. They started offering up their children to Bowen. And he said, oh my goodness. Those are the kinds of things that hinder us is that if you don't have the spirit, how are you going to discern? That's right. Yeah. Well, we're you can have the knowledge, but how are you going to discern mm -hmm. between him and, and and those guys were good. Sorry, that's like that's the first place. <laughs> but that being said, it's it's impressive. So, oh man, look at that guy. Boy, 
I can't wait to be a preacher. They don't know what a preacher is. That's right. They want to be a preacher because they're looking at outward stuff. Mm -hmm. That is not ministry. When you walk out that door, you don't have a clergy collar, or are you still a light? Can you still empower people? Mm -hmm. Can you still lift them up? Can you do those kinds of things? Come on, Bishop. We get caught up in the wrong stuff. Sometimes you do things because that's protocol, but when it comes to salvation, it's not about protocol, it's about what the spirit and his word directs you to do. And so that being said, I don't want to take up a lot of time, but I'm just saying, we got to be cautious. Knowledge is nothing without the Spirit. Right. The Holy Ghost itself is called the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth. I always call it my truth detector. Because if I have concerns about stuff, so. it does not set well with me. I'm going to pray about it. And I'm going to get the Word and search it out. And then I'm not so arrogant that I don't think I can talk to the law and say, what is your impression about that word? That's why the scripture in Isaiah said, come let us read. reason. Oh, yes. To work together. Together, yes. yes. So we can come to some type of conclusion mm -hmm. that makes sense. And so those things are important. So I don't want to take up my, but that scares me because I know what you said, the spirit. All these guys that y'all moved on in the Old Testament, they only could do what they did because he used them. They were all puppets for the master's use. That's all. They could do nothing without him. And so that was just like a very good point. Because that's the point we sort of leave out sometimes. And the world don't believe that. They say they are going by the intellectual instincts. That's why everybody got to have a degree from the seminary. They all saying the same thing and doing and calling themselves something different. That's strange. They all doing the same identical thing and calling themselves something different. What are you? I'm a this. And you say, what are you? I'm an ex. Why are y'all doing the ones that go to church at the same time? Y'all doing the same things. You celebrating the same celebrations. But you X and you Y and you Z. Right. And then we, but we don't fool around with the X's. Yeah. We don't fellowship with them. Oh, no, we cannot tolerate the Z's. <laughs> <laughs> but they're doing the same thing. Right. <laughs> Hey, so, Bishop, is it good to get a doctor's degree? Or it's not good to get a doctor's degree? Or it's not good to get a doctor's degree? Knowledge of men don't last a hot second. Because every time you come up with a little thesis, things. somebody's going to refute it with some more research that may not even be valid, yes. but they don't sell that book. But you have a degree, book. don't you, Bishop? Don't you have a degree, Bishop? Yes. It's but, not that wrong. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. And I'll say, tell, say this. We have have some Only got those things because the Almighty allowed it because I was considered special ed coming to school. What? I was considered special ed coming to school. And my high school counselor told me I was too dumb to go to college. She never said that. So I didn't try to go. But the Almighty sent me anyway. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's right. Like a lot of those child sacrifices back in the day, it wasn't just because they were like, oh, I want a kid anyway. Yeah, no, yeah. they're seeking power. That's yeah. what they're seeking power. Where do you get that power from? Oh, and it doesn't require humility. All I got to do is kill my kid. Ugh. You know, these are the type of things that was going on. Every certain wickedness in this extreme form. 
So it's important we don't get caught up on the wrong thing. Absolutely. Yeah. But it's like the feelings of the the whole thing of favor is God giving us authority even when we don't have to be. So sometimes you can't be caught up in I go to school. I read. See, when God is using you, it don't matter if you ready or got to be you, He's gonna give you faith because he gave you faith. He said he qualifies the call. So. That's right. That's the he person. will qualify you. He does that. Exactly. So sometimes it's not about the PhD or the bachelor's, or you can have a high school diploma and you can sound better than the person with the PhD in the doctor. It's because when God calls you, He's called you. That's a part of being the chosen. You ain't got to have it. It's called chosen for a reason. I'm trying to land back off what the bishop was saying when he was talking about the falling of uh, Hashtan and he pulled down a third of the heaven. So we had that much of influence over us. So we had not, we're not thinking like, like Bishop said, he hadn't had interaction with him prior to that. It was to, our knowledge as much as they're able to read so far. Also, so people kind of fall in, okay, you seem to have something that they don't, or you seem to have something of esteem and they want to fall behind that. You had that much influence or something of esteem that a third of the creation, a third of the, the, the creation of heaven right. fell down with the people also fall in behind a lot of charisma ah. mm. and charismatic speaking yeah. and mm -hmm. you know, oh, da, 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 you know, all of that extra. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't know how much time could have been the smoothest charismatic well, well, think of it like this because the scripture says that he, the scripture said he was a minstrel. Uh, and oh, what do we do it. when we listen to music? A lot of times when we listen to music, when we was in the, when we was in the world, when we was in, when we was in the world, we listen, right, right. When we was in, when we was in the world doing what we wanted to do, we listen to music to set certain moods, to set That's certain right. things. Like when I was just running around ragged. I'd have my rap playing in the background, listen, talk, talking pro cash mess, sitting up and just, just beating on with it and ready to get jump out and beat up somebody. Oh, but you know, but, right. but but no, seriously. Like, but see, they, the power of me, as far as we know, when Satan spoke her, he made it, he made he might throw a rap out of it, he might even sung it to her. You understand? What, but what I'm saying is he has a power that it, the, 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 the scripture said he had pipes. You know what pipes are? Yes. Have you ever heard those those organs or whatnot that have those steam pipes in them? Yeah. And how they have all this. In it. So he had the ability to be convincing because that was the, his gift that he was given from, from from the Most High. That was what his job was. That's a good looking. You know what it said? He does, no, 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 no. The scripture says he was beautiful. The, the, the scripture says he was beautiful. So this uh, this imagination with the with the guy with the long tail with the horns. No, that's not it. Because he was a beautiful, he was an angel. He was an archangel. He was number two on the he was number two on the docket. Okay. So so to, to, to be convincing, he had it all he had it, a lot of these prophets when you walk in these churches and they've been speaking these good news over people, and that's what they have. They have that voice, they have yeah, 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 right. They, that's what they do. They go through. The, they go through the weaker sex. They go through. They go to the. They go to the woman because they know I look good. I got a good flavor. She's gonna listen to me. You know, and that's the whole thing. And see, the the, the, the he he knows what he's doing. And see, the thing is, Eve, like like Bishop said, he had probably never even seen this guy before. I even heard him. I mean, I mean, I even had the knowledge of. She might not even had the knowledge of him. Like you know, so when he came into the picture, she was like, "What? What? What's this talking snake?" Uh, and then when he was talking, her, snake, yeah. well, I'm just saying, but well, I'm just saying, uh, it, but um, so you know, it, 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 he's saying things to me that I like. This is what it, well, I'm not going to die if I eat of this tree. What do you mean I'm not going to die? The the, 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 the most high said we're going to die. But see, the thing is, what well, he did, he lied. He told her the truth, but he told her he told her the truth, but he told her he also lied because guess what? She died. <laughs> 
She died. Uh, yeah. It makes me think about how there was uh, a lot of times next to a to a legitimate prophet, there was there were also many false prophets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The thing about the adversary is that because he has more foreknowledge than you, mm -hmm. he knows how to, <laughs> how to make his foreknowledge and exalt his foreknowledge and make it seem like it's more than what the Most High is giving. Absolutely. Even though the Most High knows all of it, even to the point to where they ask the day or the hour. Well, when is the when are these and Messiah says it's not for me to even know that they are the yeah, right. So if he doesn't even know this and he's at the right hand, then <laughs> that tells you that the devil is limited and what his foreknowledge is, it's just that he knows how to present it in a way to where because he knows more than you. Oh, I was gonna say that also speaks to his approach as well. We're talking about his, you know, makeup and everything. But if he was over music, what does in music do now? It's an influence. Yes, his power influence. is an influence. Yeah. And so just thinking about the whole story of Adam and Eve and the foreknowledge that Hashem has, because he was absolutely the same when mankind was created. You know, he was absolutely already made when mankind was created. So he knows mankind's fall and knows about it from the beginning. Clearly, mm -hmm. he also used what was what was already in mankind to cause that fall. Same trick that he still does to this day. Because all he did initially, he asked, "Is that what he said? Did he say you surely know?" Cause doubt. Is exactly he caused doubt, he caused a breach in that connection, his using the weaker vessel, <coughs> widening that gap because of the foreknowledge that he had. And so to the rest of the point um he said about Jesus not knowing the time, but before that about Satan. Um, <laughs> I was talking about the fair points. That's why I was so So that's why today music is such an influence over even the followers of Christ. Did they know it? Because Satan works through the music and he works through the music industry and a lot of you can't mess with a lot of people's music. That's you can't right. tell them nothing about their music. That's right. But I want to just say that the Lord delivered me from secular music back in my point because I knew that that was not how he said it. He told, he told us in his word to the spiritual song, yeah. you know, he tells us what music to listen to. Mm -hmm. So yeah. make melodies to him. So I don't think, you know, he doesn't like us listening to the devil's, that's what they call the devil's music. Because it's, it's the spirit. And, mm -hmm. and because he was the maestro in heaven, that's why he uses it today. It's a big music. It's big in the show today. So that's why he you, it, it channels the spirit. And I've seen a footage on, on social media how they pray over the music. Some of these uh, celebrities pray over their music. The, you know, mm -hmm. sorcery, witchcraft stuff. Mm -hmm. So when you're listening to that stuff, and you wonder why you feel a certain way, and you're saying mm -hmm. feeling stuff from the past, and See, you're ripping up, up and you know, you get overwhelmed by you know, you're thinking of your ex and things of like that. Mm -hmm. you know, your ex on this song. Right. That ain't nothing but the check of the enemy. So it is. the music. So it's that's what I'm just saying. I mean, that's just for me. He 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 get because I used to be the type back in the day when they had the cassette tapes, I had to have every new song. I mean, even when I used to live with my, my parents, my grandmother and all them, I used to come home after school. 
Soon as I come in the door, I'm turning on the music videos. Remember, it was uh, MTV and all that. Yeah, but it was real music videos then, too. Yeah. Watching, we watching. My grandmother, was, she would even be saying it. She wasn't even really. She really wasn't that same back then. She would tell me, turn that next song. You know, and I never understood, like, what was everybody looking at this? But as I got older and got more, you know, growing in the faith, I understood why. Because so I praise the Yahweh for delivering me from that. But the only the other thing point was when he said mention about Christ saying that scripture that says Christ not going when he gonna return. Mm -hmm. Wasn't he in the flesh when he said that? Yeah. Okay, so people say that scripture not saying you. He knows when he gonna return in his state where he is now. But mm -hmm. when he was in the flesh, no, he could not tell man us when he was gonna return. <laughs> he knows when he's gonna return now. And music is a fusion of gospel, jazz, yeah. and all that. He comes to all and tell you about that. And not only that, the industry knows that. Yes. Yeah, the industry most definitely knows because we know yeah. who controls the industry. Yes. Right? yes. And they join us as right. the key, a certain demographic, mm. and tell it down. Yeah. There, there is a spirit that goes with everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. You can you can't only really watch TV anymore yeah, because it, it leads to every spirit that people want to take in the world. Yes, sir. It's amazing. It is. You look at it, I say, gosh, there's nothing to watch pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's old, but I'm just saying it it doesn't. Meet my needs. Yeah, exactly. It really doesn't. It doesn't help me. Right. And and every spirit that people entertain, you can find it on TV. Come on. Prime time. Yeah, you can. And, and and that's the, the spirit of the world. That's why he says, "Love not the world, but the things, things are in the world. it." Yeah. All is in the world is the lust, lust, lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and these things are not the father, but of the world. And it's hard for us to really embrace that, but we need to talk more about it yes. because we're dealing with spirits. We're dealing with just folk. Right. Our warfare is not against flesh and blood. It's about people that are being imitated by these challenges from media. Mm -hmm. Our kids certainly are. Oh, definitely. You know, so kids, I don't know if my kids will have their own TV. <laughs> yeah, they got the TVs in the room that they were sort of running. <laughs> They don't have a room. They say, no, you come to my room. I say, wait a minute. You don't have a room in my house. You know, you're just a your visitor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but the thing is, you got to monitor your kids. Yes, sir. Yes. Just like Eve. Somebody had monitored Eve. She might not cause you ladies to have to suffer so much. Oh, why Eve? Because... These things are happening all the time. And if you can hear some of the things I hear from kids, I'm shocked that they even do those kinds of things. But kids, kids are young folks, junior high kids. And some of them didn't start in junior high. That's right. So there is a great sense to monitor. This is for knowledge, everybody. Yeah, well, right. Monitor your kids and make sure that their well being is, is in place. Because this world is interesting. Satan did not, he's pulling up all stops quickly. All stops. It's like the Pharaoh that did not know uh, Joseph. We're going to a generation where these kids are not going to know nothing that was right. Absolutely. Yeah. They just want to know wrong, uh -huh. which is they want to make it seem like it's right. They want to make it legal. But yeah, I watched Arthur, Arthur, Channel 16. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it in many years, so I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what happened? What? Uh, Mr. Ratburn? But, but that's when he's a male who's not married to another man. Really? I thought this year was a little bit like Everything and everything, they turn him into child things. 
into stuff that children should not be looking at and saying that it's all right and it's not all right. Okay. And I said something on Channel 16 that I don't know if some of y'all can keep this. There's a little break of a song that comes yep. on. Come see, come see my family. Yes. Yep. And they have yes. the, the diagrams of each different kind of family oh. today. Yes. So they oh. have the, the picture of two men and their child. Yep. Two wow. women and their child. And then the regular family dynamic yes. has a family. Yes. That's, yes. That's, that's come in between throughout the day. That oh, commercial. Really? It's a commercial and, and it's all throughout. I think I've seen it up oh, to like yeah. about. Eight o'clock at night. Oh, no. They show it all day. I don't watch that station. That's PBS. It used to be a good shade show. And then they ended up doing it for the kids. Yeah, it's a good shade show. They do it for the kids. They do it for the kids. They do it for the kids. <laughs> but see the thing is once again, once again we but see once again we have received the foreknowledge because we were given the commandment that a man shall, that woman shall not dress in the attire of a man in the attire of a man nor shall a man put, put where that means which pertains to a woman nor shall a man lie with a man as if a woman and women say well they said it about me guess what a lot of time when y'all said man he also referred to women. Yes. That's right. Well, Romans one huh? He covers Wait, that in Romans one. Yeah. It's unnatural. Well, but what I'm saying, but no, what I'm saying is, it's the twentieth chapter. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, that's he's talking about the man part, but the, for cover all of it. But the man, the woman, woman. they were talking about the man. But the woman so, came from the man, so yes. the man is guilty of something. The whole family, if, if the man, if the, if the father was guilty, something the whole family was guilty. Well, it was so serious. The scripture said, "Burn them." Yeah. Uh, some they say stone them. No, but that burn oh, them God. alive. Because it's in a because he the scripture clearly calls sin sin, but he calls an abomination an abomination. He took that to a whole different level because an abomination is something that just cannot be stood for. Is to be immediately terminated. Well, he actually, I said, I had to read it again. The whole chapter, because that's a serious chapter. We talk about the law, but he shares his attitude about behavior. And it's a very staunch attitude. Wow. But about, and a lot of things they tell you. Chapter, uh, channel 16, oh, oh, they they a lot of things, a lot of things in the Old Testament, you know, he told you take things before the judges. But a certain things he didn't tell you take before the judges. He said destroy it. He said if you come to you first, you'd be the first one to put your hands in that back. But, but yes. he says this also, I remember he says, but anybody that witnesses those things and don't do it. He's in cahoots with him. Yes. Yes. That's serious stuff. That's a legal term now. Guilty by association. What's the legal They charge fifteen hundred dollars for blessing. Because look at the scriptures have to say, and then, but for it's this is very clear about this. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, yes, we're talking about your gift. Did I need you to do that? That's a dangerous thing. You get into stuff on your own. You're becoming a little demigod. You're about to be in trouble. Because God is not giving the glory, you're trying to get his glory. Amen. Never works. That's a dangerous place to be. Oh, hold on. Okay. Um, I, I get what you're talking about. My thing is this. We 
you're looking at the beginning, we're at the end. God's coming back. We're at war. So sometimes Satan ain't just sitting there waiting. Mm -hmm. turn around. He's knocking the doors at this point. Because we're at the point where people are getting gifts. He's coming back. Like it's we're in revelation. Some of us, people are manifesting gifts. Like I'm seeing it. So it's not so much at the beginning, we're at the end. Yeah, I've been. Uh, oh, you can say that. Okay, I was just telling a friend this uh, yesterday, and sometimes like I go off on a tangent in my mind. But being in business, right? I can tell even like in the business world, like we at the end of days, and for me, it seems like the elite, like. Blacks are like the biggest consumers on the earth. We used to be the merchants, but we're the biggest consumers right now. And it seems as though like the elite are trying to draw in as much like resources as they can from the consumer. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to get up out of that. Yes. Like, yes. like yes. yeah, like it's like they depleting, yes. they depleting like, like the economy right now. Yeah. And they're gonna leave like the bottom of the the food chain with nothing and they're about to get out of here. Like I literally told somebody that yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot further of prophecy that many people yeah. not, not, only, not only that, but you will see how there's a turning over, there's a changing of the guard. Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. there were key the, well, two points that I wanted to make just to land back on what you were saying immediately. You can also see how they're putting people in places where we used to go get in. It's almost kind right. of suspicious right. now. Yeah. It's literally yeah. almost yeah. suspicious yeah. now. Yeah. No, 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 when I was fighting yeah. all these many years before yeah. to get yeah. there, yeah. you ain't going yeah. there. Now all of a sudden, yeah. are you yeah. ushering me into the... I don't want to know. The second thing... I it's a trick. <laughs> right, it is. It's a trick. Uh, the second thing I was going to mention is because the conversation previously was going to, you know, the info, we're talking about Channel 16, PBS, and all of that stuff, and the songs, and the industry, and things like that. This is why, and I think um, Bishop was saying, you're supposed to make melodies in your heart, so you're supposed to, you know, sing these spiritual songs. This is why music made for the most high, it got to come forth. You can see after a whole, a lot of times in the book, after there was a victory one, even as they were coming out of Egypt, Moses and Miriam song. Even though the they horse and rider into the sea. <laughs> like, hey, I can't do that. You know we have to make these songs and we have to give our kids and ourselves and our, you know, peers and wh wh whomever else is thirsty. But that knowledge and that spiritualness or spirituality, that spiritual feeding of the most high, not everybody, like you were saying, not everybody's a preacher. Not everybody is a teacher. Not everybody is this. Some things come through song. Forefather David set up minstrels, singers in the temple after that was made. Um, actually, I'm sorry, Solomon. Forgive me. Solomon said, and come to think of it, that was their job day and night. Mm -hmm. Like literally, it says in there, morning. So, it, okay, somebody clocking out for the morning shift. Here comes somebody on the afternoon shift. <laughs> so, they clock out the afternoon shift. It, Night shift, and they that's their job to sing and play instruments. So, to guard our gates, and we have to, as you were saying, you have to watch your kids and what they're doing. Yes. We got to give them another op another option, yes, like to not rejoice. And, and, and you know, we talked about this previously like, you know, the most high wants to having the foreknowledge of who the most high is, having the foreknowledge of what is desired by him. He also wants to show up and show how what he is. Yeah, and true. he wants us to house his glory. Hallelujah. He don't want us, if he said, I will not, ain't that he don't want us, he said, I will not share my glory with another one. So if we're trying to take on that glory as if I have done, so said, oh no, I have done this myself. No, you about to get smacked right with you. Yeah. You about to yeah. get yeah. smacked. So but yeah, but yeah, you're not trying to take his glory and you're being a vessel for him to he absolutely wants to show up and show because otherwise, how
how people going to you know. You don't light a candle and stick it under a bushel. Sure. 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 You got to get back to some of those old songs, too. Listen, come on. It's the truth behind it, and it's yeah. the, the spirit that uh, likes these likes materials now. Because majority of the artists that's out here now, that's like your top gospel group. They either it's like they, they, they yeah, they either lesbian or that's right. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't believe, and that's like right. That's like um, that. I mean, that's like it's concrete. Yeah, I'm um, secondhand knowledge. Uh, hearing people that's firsthand knowledge, like yeah. That's why. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, well, that's, that's and but know. we have people singing their songs, and I'm like. But the spirit matters. And that the, the, the spirit's in the song, not in that part. The spirit's in every song. Yes. Each song has a different spirit and makes you feel a different type of way. That's why you that's why you have to be careful on that. that I, I hate to be I, sometimes I hate to be admitted, but you know, Kim and I had talked before about listening to certain spirits. I mean, listening to certain songs and how they bring certain spirits and how you the people who are actually bringing these songs are the ones you gotta watch out for because they're putting spirits into these songs. Yeah. Um because uh, if, if you haven't noticed, even in gospel, supposed to gospel, mm -hmm. you have different songs that bring different feelings over you, yes. uh, over you. And but see, the thing is, some songs you sit there and listen to, and if you listen to them, your spirit would knock you flat. I'm like, no, uh, uh, no, get that away from me. Mm -hmm. Because the whole thing is, there's a poison mixed in with their songs that they're singing. A lot of these. People, I, I, I'm, I'm a, especially with this contemporary gospel, they come up with the idea that we're living in grace. We can do whatever we want to do and still be able to sing for the Father. What did the, what did the Father say back in Deuteronomy and Leviticus? I want perfection. You can't come to me. You, you, you can't. You can't. He, he wants us to bring uh, him our best, but he has rules to what his best can be. You can't be his best if you're sleeping with a man and you're a man. You can't be his best if you're a woman sleeping with a woman. You can't be his best if you're sitting for sleeping with animals. You can't be his best if you're a constant liar. You can't be a liar of any sort. You can't be his best if so. But yet we're bringing out these songs. And I say, it's, and I say uh, we, I'm just meaning it, as a people. We're bringing out songs from a harlot. Because we were taught the ways of the harlot, so we think the ways of the harlot were correct. We haven't opened up our minds, nor have we opened up our hearts to really receive the ruach for, for complete understanding and for uh, to be able to discern between good and evil. Yeah. That evil is, I mean, I'm at the point now, I don't even listen to the radio in the car. I don't even listen to gospel channels in the car anymore because some of the songs have gone so far left. It's a poison to my ears. It's a poison to my soul. And it really disgusts me. Right, and, you know, we're, we're we're supposed to be a people who are who, uh, just like she set apart. We were, we we he, we're a peculiar people. We are ordained to be his, and if we're ordained to be his, we can even with the circular the secular music, we can't have any parts of it. We can't have any part of this contemporary. A lot of this contemporary music, because some a lot of it is coming from a twisted situation, a twist, a, 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 a twist. I hate to say it, but from twisted people. When you believe that you can do what you want and still go to heaven, you've lost your mind. You know, and then they want to talk about the they, they talk about what it was nailed to the cross. You show me in the scripture where it says that the that the, 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 the commandments were nailed to the cross. Nowhere it doesn't say it. Paul, as a matter of fact, Paul said, how, "How how can it be that we who were once in sin, uh, dead in sin, how can we who are dead in uh, dead to sin go back and live back in it again? Because we can't." God forbid, you know, we can't, we, we can't go back to it. So if we have left it. Guess what? We've left it. We don't carry on those, those same ways. 
Snoop Dogg on Rance Allen's, and then he coming out with his own. Guess what? Did you think I listened to one bit of either, either his songs? No, no you know why? That's how you know they go. Yeah. You know, and what well, I'm saying, but you think do it, and 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 so, I mean, so many, so many old world artists. I'm not old world. Uh, sec, uh, secular artists want to come into the, the coming in with contemporary music, and but yet, guess what? They're still doing. They're still singing the secular music. They're still making profit off the secular music. Yeah. They still take receiving that money. They they want to keep that money come rolling in. So therefore, where is your God? Yeah. Where's the foreknowledge in all of this? Because He told us to keep a Him in our mouths and a gospel in our heart. Yes. Okay. So there's your foreknowledge. Yes. I got a couple. I got. I got a couple. All right. Everybody ain't gonna be chosen. Everybody is supposed to act like the chosen, period. We're separate and we're supposed to act separate. But even with the chosen, we had the Levite tribe. The Levite tribe couldn't cut the hair, they was priestly. Even them in the chosen had different realms and different performances for God. So everybody ain't gonna have different gifts and have the same gifts. If you keep looking for something to be in a certain form, you go and miss God. I miss her. God does not have a form that you think it should come in. He comes into it. He will develop you. But sometimes I keep telling our chosen people, he said chosen people do this. This is how they're going to recognize you. But we are here for the nation of everybody. This is the end. We are at war. Yeah, this is that's where I'm at. This is war. We have principalities. We got demons. We got people taking our people. We are at war. Somebody got to go in there and get Somebody got to go and say, my Holy Ghost going to come to me when I'm there. I can walk people up in the club now because my Holy Ghost is covering me. No. No. And get them. No. If they no. Get them, that's no. what I'm doing. No, I'm not going to go there. You don't know how many people, do you know how many people I said, <laughs> me and my friends say wives in the club. When them people came up here and shot up them people, she was the Holy Ghost of turn and saved them people. We are for his spirit. We don't have time to be afraid. Y'all so afraid to do everything. My Holy Ghost going to get me fear. I ain't afraid. Be wise but stay still got covered by someone. Even with even with the diseases that's going on, his favor is we we get passed over. That's favor. That's 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 the covering. God covers you. That one does not. That's that's not that's but this is Like you're talking about, you want to step foot in a club. 
unless the Spirit of the Most High comes on you and says, and it comes strong on you, like, because you know, like, yo, I ain't trying to think you call you to go. And then you go that instant to do that, but to go and have fun and save and get you, you know, yeah, and it's a separation. Yeah, now you go into save, they don't get you out of the club, something like that. I do want to, because I can that's somebody's sin. If that's your calling, by all means, no power to you. He will equip you if he has called you to do it, and there will be no questions about it. I just want to insert it a caution, a caution as of right now, because it just seems like a lot, you know, quite a few, or not quite a few, but a few things where, you know, kind of said, and it is causing a lot of uproar. Yeah. You know, I want to reel us to, I want us to reel it back and be always giving glory unto God. You know what I'm saying? Because when it talks about in the scriptures, not kindling a fire on the Sabbath, when mm -hmm. you look back at that, that means being brutish, that means starting drama, that means, you know, so yeah. if the, yeah, if the conversation is not coming back, to the edification of one another and glorification of the Father, I definitely want to caution us against it. Let us know that, you know, drop it. It is where it is, it is what it's Absolutely. going to be. Just like it says in the back of the book, some call it Renew Covenant or New Testament. You know, if it is of the Father, then hey, the Father goes to step. If it is not, it's going to come to nothing. There is no reason to, you know, just go away. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. yeah, was, I was trying to like the room, the temperature, I'm like, I don't yeah. care. Most, if someone tells me God told me to go do something, yeah, exactly. who am I to say? My parents. I'm like, I'm like, that's going to bear its fruit. It's going to be the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, I, I still want to say, like, we, we absolutely have to govern ourselves by uh, four. Yes. And that you got to govern yourself by four. Thank you, Yes, sir. Yeah, and this is how it's been for the last few weeks that we've been around. You know, we've been we're we're at a point where there's a fine line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're at a point where there's a fine line. Um, but the Holy Ghost, our relationship with our Creator, how good is my relationship with? Him? Does he really speak to me? Mm -hmm. Does he really order my steps? Right. There we go. Does he really go before me? So, but for the last few weeks, see what we're dealing with here is a fine line. And just like she's saying, and, and like everybody already knows, spiritual warfare is a, always for believers. It's a, always for believers. It's a constant. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So you're all, we're always, we're always in a constant fight. You know, when we, when we wake up in the morning, we got to remember, you know, to, to thank, thank the Most High and, and ask Him to be with us and continue to go before us. Mm -hmm. To continue to allow us to have the whole honor. We got to continue to thank Him. If, we, if, if you're here, you hear it, and you don't have the Holy Ghost, you need to get the Holy Ghost. Lay down or do whatever it is that he's instructing you to do to get the Holy Ghost. See, with the Holy Ghost, you got power. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. See, he, he, don't, he don't give us the spirit. Of, we don't operate in the spirit of fear. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But we operate in spirit, the spirit of truth. And we operate in love. Yes. The enemy yes. would have us to separate one from another. The enemy wouldn't all the relationships that are in this room right now, the enemy would prefer that there would be none. Amen. Mm -hmm. That there would be no relationships. But like I said, it was a fine line. God wants me to himself. See, when I am weak, you know, Paul was saying, when I am weak, then I'm strong. Look at what happened. Look around you. I mean, look at amongst the brothers and the others, amongst the sisters. And what we're going through in our, in our, in our, you know, in these flesh, in these mortal bodies, what things that we are going through. 
and just 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 count it all joy. We got you know we got to count it all joy. Right now we're headed, and, and we're this is about to be over, and we're headed into a service where we're going to be inviting God in the, the Spirit of God, and it's just, it's with us now. But the devil would have us to when the music comes on today to make sure we tune when we start to dissect it. And it, the, it would have us to stay in the flesh. It, it would have us not to be spiritual and not to love God. I'm talking about the enemy and the absent. And be careful of self. You know, you've got to kill self daily. Yes, that's, that's true. I mean, because going on this, this part. Even though, yes, I say there's some wicked spirits that have put out songs. But is it, is it still a separation of, because they're not making these songs for the Elohim of Abraham, my Isaac. They're not making these songs, uh, we're going to sing this uh, next Sabbath. They're not singing, they're not making these songs. But when we say, we sing a song, give myself away, I give myself away. They might be saying, I give myself away to Jesus, Easter, Christmas, the, the, the God of Sunday. But when we say, man, I give myself away, it's like, I give myself away to Yahoo. I give myself away to Yah. I'm giving my life because. My life is not my own to you. I because I like once I come to this church, I'm like, man, I do belong to you. But I can't belong to you unless I'm in the truth. And when you start, when you change the not be so di dissecting, because like you say, you're about to go into worship, and I don't be like, you know what? I'm dissecting every wait a minute. What song is this? Who wrote this? Let me check who it is. It's more of uh, you know what? Let me focus on the on the words. One of my one of my ox, he's in the, 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 the music thing. And, and he told me it's like, yo, uh, I may not agree with the lifestyles, but I've seen the words that they is a gift. It comes without so he was like the words they would come out with, he said, dude, I don't been in arenas, I didn't where people like you know, this song hits me. This song is ministering to me. So he said, I don't knock the song unless it's unscriptural. Mm -hmm. But that artist, the most high is going to deal with them. Right. Right. But it doesn't tell us to just every song now, now granted, set apart music, set apart worship, <laughs> foresight. For knowledge, for ordain, he ordained certain things, some songs that's going to come into the house that's just going to be strictly for the house. He's going to know what the people need. He's going to know this is how God's going to minister to me today. It's not going to be a, uh, I picked these songs out on Monday, no, Craig, no, sent the songs out on Monday, and this is the same spirit that's going to. Oh, all because sometimes, and I used to be good at it. I'm not so good at it, but I would make my lineup, and the day before, the morning, I'm like, nah, this is, nah, nah, we gotta go. This is what I'm feeling this. And you feel it, because sometimes you're like, this is a dope lineup all week, and it's like something inside, you're like, mm, nah, you need to, this is where I want to go. But, but Father, this is the lineup we had. It sounds good. Once again, me, and speaking of myself, you see this line of us created? Uh, you see the transitions? Oh, this is going to be. And the father, like, oh, I don't want that. This is where I want to be. This is what I want from the people today. And today, I mean, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing of thanksgiving. It's a, it's a thing because the adversary would love to come in the room and just bring. Throw it down, just bring it down. But for knowledge, we know the end. 
We're at the end, and we know the end. So guess what? The saints is coming to test our patience. That's not be. Don't be surprised. But we know what happens at the end. We have the victory. We understand. Satan knows his his demise. His angels know his demise. But when we give thanks to the Father, and that's when that that, that dance come in. Because it's like, man, I know we got the victory. I know we have the. This is where praise come in. This is where the praise come. This is because you know what? I know. I know it's going down. And people talk about the big fans. People talk about Super Bowl and they win in the celebration. There should be a noise out of Israel because yes. why? We don't understand we got victory. Yes. And we understand that we're not defeated. We understand. You know what? Sing a new song. Yeah. Yes. Sing a new song today. Sing it from your heart. But it's just a it's just a thing that we just have to make sure that we let nothing come and take the glory from the most high because once again, as Nick said, we are self now. Just it when we come together, like even being in this walk, I haven't been in it that long, but I see the same thing. It's no different from when you come out to Christianity sometimes. Like things turn into debates with us and one another, like we're supposed to be focused on the most high and building one another up. You're going to hear some things that you might disagree with, but what I do, I'm just going to speak for myself. If it is something that I, I might not understand or disagree with, I'll chop that thing up with the most high and just try to take it in. It's a lot of emotion. And it shouldn't be that. Like, we're missing the whole mark. We are in the days of judgment, and there are things going on. We see it every day now. It's getting worse. But we're supposed to be building one another up. Absolutely. Not who's right, who's wrong. Right. The scripture is the scripture right there. Yeah. You might interpret it differently than somebody else, but it's okay. It's your understanding of the most high. That's that's the first and foremost thing. We're supposed to fruits of the spirit always with one another. But I see a meme on that of the week where it said uh fruits of the uh, what did I just say? Without obedience. You can't have fruits of the spirit without obedience in the garden or something. Yeah, yeah. It helps you grow. So I'm just saying that like. I mean, I could be wrong, but I mean, you feel that energy off of people. I'm just asking everybody, you know, like what you were saying in so many words, I'm direct with it. Just check yourself, everybody. Check yourself. Because that's not what we hear from. Absolutely. We're not here for that. There's just a lot of emotions going on. I'm checking myself too, because I kind of got a little riled up as well. And forgive me on that, but yeah, hopefully we all just check in. Nobody is smarter than nobody is. Yes. Yes. But we are in a class setting, and the word even says, in all thy getting. And understand. Oh, yeah. So there's a way. Yes, there's a way. And that needs to be brought forth with which you did very eloquently and it was righteous. But we have to get an understanding because we can't just let anything just be said and just say take it up with the father. Because that can that can get some pretty bad understanding from a visitor that somebody needs to have an understanding. You just can't let stuff just go. Then I would say then that would be there should be a house rule. That if something like that happens, then it should be bishop 
or the teacher who says something. Mm -hmm. But you have to have it restraint to let things be said the whole, because sometimes you can, you don't have to finish. Yeah. But you let things finish out then and you do it out of love. Yeah. It's not a, let me I'll talk to you, let me, let me, let me, you know, it's, it's, that's not how, that's not how it's done. So, but, uh, once again, that's just more knowledge. What yeah. happens again? We your form, yes. I must have missed the wicked man, but <laughs> 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 I was out there trying to bring a soul to salvation. Okay. And but unfortunately, but what you say is significant. If you ever teach in groups of individuals who are not like you, you can't go in there with the premise that you know everything. Never, but all I, I always say this all understanding don't come from me. I don't know what your limits are in terms of your cognitive development. You might be a genius, you can be a lot of those things, but everybody's not on that same page with you. But the Almighty gives us the understanding we need personally for any time in our journey. Some folks want mysteries and you can't even keep the Sabbath. What do you need a mystery for? Come on. Mm. Fundamentals, beginnings, everybody has a beginning and it's still a growth process. It's a growth, it's not like I'm gonna up you and one and all that. That's the world stuff. The word, he's gonna call some apostles, some prophets. Notice the order. Then he says, some, no, for that, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. What was the purpose of that? They're supposed to do something. It's the problem of teaching things. People need information. Who gives the understanding? I don't know. Any situation I've been in, I never know how much people know. Yeah. Some folks I've taught some classes, I'm sure some of the students could have taught themselves. They could have been a teacher. But I still have to make sure everybody has access. They may not all pass the tests, but it don't mean they can't pass the tests. Right. It's not the event, it's the long term. What is the outcome that you're expecting? I'm expecting everybody going to make it to the New Jerusalem. That's the outcome. And so, but everything has to be done decently in order. And, and that's critical. And then notice the first fruit of the spirit is what? He put it at the top of the order of the things that we should be developing is the love part. The next is what? Joy. You gotta be happy about this. He called me out of some stuff into his marvelous light. I'm happy. I should never come to church depressed that he didn't call me out of dark stuff. So. I can't think about that a lot. And then the other things keep adding to that. But my goodness. I'm sorry, Miss. Whatever it was, it's history. I always say if it happened an hour ago, it's history. It can't change it, but you can learn from it and move on. And try not to replicate it. <laughs> Look, good stuff. I mean, I just came in that part. I said, I must have missed the great thing. Watch the replay, Bishop. Huh? Watch the replay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm deleting the replay after this. <laughs> But after this, I'm the reason. What is the scripture? It says Job chapter 28, verse 28. It reads, And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Yes. And I just wanted to say that to say this with this being a classroom say, but a classroom dedicated unto Yah. Mm -hmm. To get anything from him, there's a, a trans 
transaction that has to take place, the form of sacrifice. You no longer require animal sacrifices, but you have to sacrifice your flesh unto him. You have to sacrifice your self exalting unto him. You have to come unto him humble. You have to deal with your neighbor through humility, through yeah. love. Um, if we want to get understanding from the Father or from his ministering spirits, we can't forsake humility. Absolutely. Love. Absolutely. And looking out for one another. Amen. Sometimes the, the in the heat of your emotions, the best you can do to humble yourself is to keep your mouth closed. And that's why the brother says, you know, if that's all you got at that time is emotions, then take that home mm. and take it up with the father. Absolutely. But if you can sacrifice yourself in this classroom, you stand to gain more. Absolutely. Yes. You stand to gain a lot more and you cannot actually benefit someone else because we all struggle with those emotions. Mm -hmm. But yeah, love, joy, peace, yeah, long suffering. Joy. Sometimes you gotta wait for that understanding to come. Oh, right. yeah. These types of things, um, you can't forsake them. You have to li listen to understand, don't listen to respond. Ah, yeah, that's gonna get those are kind of sweet sounds I'd like to have. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, uh, but this is why we serve Elliot for quarter because I think, yeah, because he just let us nothing just ride. Mm. Because you let it ride, then it rides into the worship, it rides on, right? We, and then it rides on to like, uh, y'all want to go back? And, mm. or, uh, and the adversary be like, yeah, finally. Mm. So, uh, but as we go through for say, for me, the siblings of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. And yet, even being mixed, 
he still called us, called us out. Still was like, yeah, I got you, I got you, I got you. They talk about uh, the lesson in Romans chapter 8, and how they talk about the, the, the foreknowledge of, of how Yah had chosen and how he knew what Jacob and Esau and how he even talks about uh, before they was born, he had already ordained their, their positions. Jacob was going to call even before they was, was in, even the prophecy came to him. It's like the older was son, the younger, which is backwards. But then again, you get to Joseph, and you just talk about Joseph, and here he is talking about, hey, y'all. Y'all know owners, but guess what? Y'all going to bow down to me. So when we get the revelation that when we go into worship, it's not a, a thing of, oh, if anybody wants to eat, I'm sorry, please grab something while we kind of just close out. But, uh, but having foresight, the, the ability to predict or the action of, of predicting what will happen or be needed in the future. What do we do for the most high? And what do we, what action does it require? Mm -hmm. If we go into worship and our heart is not there, how can we expect something? How can we cry and dance and do all these things in your heart? Mm -hmm. Is far from you. He's looking like we're no different from uh, the, 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 the prophets of uh, 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 Lao when they was just cutting themselves. Uh, cutting themselves. That's we're, we're really, when we come before the Most High and our heart is not right and we're trying to offer up something to Him, we are literally committing suicide. Mm -hmm. Because we're dishonoring him you know, because I'm doing everything, but yeah, I'm gonna come on the Shabbat, the Sabbath, and be like, I'm gonna give him praise, even though I might live through the week, or I, I, my mind is not, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm coming in. All right, let's do this. It's, but where's the, 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 the humbleness and where's the, the, the contrite spirit of? The songs that we we were singing and the element we were worshiping, it's like there's something that the Father truly desires, and we talk about it—the worship of spirit and truth. But like I told you, I mean, I talked about it a couple of weeks ago. There's a level of worship that everybody can't go. Everybody can't go to this place, this this deep water that you know what. This is where my heart is. Everybody can be surface. Everybody can keep your mind up here. But it's like, nah, that's, I'm about to go deep. It's like, and it's sometimes it can be hard when you're amongst me. But it's like, you know what, I'm about to honor. And my, my vision is strictly, I'm not worried about what's going on. I'm not going to worry about what was said. I'm not going to worry about how I was feeling right now. I'll speak to you. I'll speak to you, Father. Right now, this is, and we talk about predicting what would happen or what needs to be, what's needed. We truly need Yah Spirit to truly saturate all other unclean rocks, all other unclean whatever. It's like, Father, we need children who have to come in and flush every unclean spirit so that we can, because you know what? It's kind of hard for them. No, it's not hard. Yeah. It's hard for us to bring to praise and think he's going to come down. And then there's, there's as we talked about, it, there's sin in the camp. Or there's still someone sitting there. They don't take all of that. Someone's hmm. still sitting there like, you know what? I'm just going to just. But when the people, when we go to Acts, when they was one accord, 
when you when there is for one there's shalom in the house there's shalom there's a connective with the body if 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 my arm is disconnected from my body there is stress pain agony i'm not thinking about anything else except for what i'm feeling but when i become before the when i come before the most high it's a you know what that's funny i've been standing for that and my side was just killing me before class started but right now i don't even feel it why because when y'all comes in guess what i'm not feeling i'm not worried about a pain and i'm not worried because i'm trying to it's bigger than me but the adversary trying to make you you know what, Brian? You might as well stay home because you know you can't even walk and, and that pain and you don't have to stand it up and man, just have somebody else teach and all the excuses that are trying to come. Mm -hmm. But predicting what would happen, I already know if I'm with my brother, my kinsmen, my family, that's what. I'm not going to feel that. They're going to strengthen me. They're going to give me strength. When we go to worship, it's going to give me strength. Why? Because when I see us rejoicing, it's like, hallelujah. Yes. Y'all be praised. Yes. And it's like, and we talked about his marvelous, his marvelous works. And we talked about it earlier today. You know, hey, because we supposed to remind our children and generation after generation, don't forget where this mighty, who you serve. And, and we also remind our children, look, he took us out of captivity, out of bondage with a mighty hand. He did this to the Egyptians. He took us to the land and, and he did all these great things. And now we get to us. Now we can add on. You know what? He took me out of this sin. He took me out of that sin. He brought me out of this darkness. He did this. Once again, talking about Yah's marvelous, his marvelous, his marvelous works. We often say hallelujah. But what does that mean? Because sometimes we say we just do it out of hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But what does hallelujah mean? Say it again. We say highest praise, but what does it actually mean? Because Hallelujah is actually a command. It's a command to give the highest, to give a show of praise to the Father. So it's like a call and response. If somebody says hallelujah, then that means people are supposed to do something to show forth praise to the most high. So it's just not a call, it's just not a hallelujah. And it's the yes, sir. Another thing, one of the histories with that word, hallelujah. They, scholars suggest that it's perhaps like a unwilling, meaning that it, it was a word that, that doesn't really like it wasn't a word that originated in a language. It's more like how we say bark bark. Uh, That's an onomatopoeia that is it's only a word because it's a representation of what the sound the sound that dogs make. So the history of it, if you ever look at like some of the other nations over in like even to this day, they make a a, a a, a loud sound called an ovulation, which is when they get excited, they they are, and that's where they believe that the origination that word, that word, halal in Hebrew, culture, is the excitement that the people would, the sound of excitement that people would, would raise up with in praise to the Father. That that word is so now it, it turned into a. We're hallelujah. We're hallelujah because that was the sound that people would make. But also, we have to take in account that all the cultures Israel was sort of thrusted into, yeah. <laughs> and it's impossible to live in any culture and not take on some of the characteristics of that culture. So it makes it very challenging. It's self -form. We got the Holy Ghost. We got the spirit, and without that, we would be really in the jam. Mm -hmm. But you know what? He says there is no language in which the voice is not heard. Okay. He just is the heart of men. 
You can say hallelujah and be get ready to go out and shoot some dope. <laughs> and but when your heart is connected to him, he not to see. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't look at what we do. He ain't concerned about us, period. Because he said, I'm the God of all flesh. I'm the God of all flesh. He don't care about Callaway. Callaway better care about him. Because you, I don't own nothing. If I went to sleep right now, I can't take my car with me. Can't take my house with me. Can't take my money with me. I don't have nothing but him. And when we get to the point where we realize we're nothing without him, it don't matter. So I, that's what I say. I enjoy your, your comments. He's saying powerful things. And yet you don't say a lot of stuff. But the Almighty is trying to let him know that you know he wants to use you. That's the only way it's gonna happen, but he's grooming you for his glory. Because I always say folks ain't never been to anything, I'm never gonna tell anybody. That's facts. That's right. Yeah. So uh wow. This is good stuff, and this is really uh, fellowship in the first place to come together to empower each other. Because our test is not in the building, it's when you walk out the door. You have to be empowered to walk out the door and still be fighting to the world. Oh, so we Okay. But anyway, uh, I, I am so thankful for the seventh school lesson for all the participants. You know, that makes a, a, a class or a lesson viable. A lot of people contributing because it provokes thinking. And the purpose of it is to see how can I better my relationship with my people. That's the only thing. It doesn't make me a greater person than anyone else, but it certainly will help me empower myself as I'm looking towards the second coming. And that's the only thing that's really important right now. Being recognized of men makes no difference. That's not even as important as my salvation. And I, I never joined, the, I didn't come to commandments to meet anything. I just found that God was real in elementary school. And because I never thought he was still the presence of the Lord, but I felt it was real to me. And I couldn't stay away from that little storefront church. But eventually I received the Holy Ghost. And the rest is history. And I wasn't a perfect person. I had to grow up. I was a kid. But I tell you this if he called you to do something, your life will be a shipwreck until you say yes. Come on. Mm. Come on, Frank. You cannot outrun his will concerning you. That's poor knowledge. You know what you were like when he called you. You know what you did. You know what you did. You can still call Make your election stand. That. So I thank you for the teaching today. Give courage, great courage, strength, and encouragement because you know what? Time is getting close to not happening. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, they already set the foundation for all the stuff that we're doing now won't be happening in the future. Anything that offends people is outlawed. Well, you know the word of God offends everybody. So you know that book is gone. You better get it in your heart. Read it. Discuss it. Learn it. And you're going to need it. Because during that time, they all they're they're pushing all, alternative truth. So truth is not truth anymore. It's what you perceive it to be. 
No, 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 no. She's talking about the commercial. Oh, that's a commercial. You have to be watching it for it to catch you. You have to be watching it to catch you. Oh, okay. It pops in every so often. So, yeah, that's how the objectives are being pushed. It's the same thing in uh, regular TV. I can remember a time I ever seen two black men kissing. Right. Until I was watching TV. And they say, keep loving the one, you know, I said, what? No. That was shocking. Folks, we, we were barely on TV. But then he got us on there looking crazy. But my thing is, you got to be mindful of all these things. These are actually spirits that are entertaining. Our young people are entertaining. You got to just pray about it and bother what this should be. And it's challenging. I mean, you can be the greatest parent in the world, but you're not the only one that influences your child. Thanks. That's a challenge to resolve. But prayer can go where you can. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Prayer is very powerful. Be effectual. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Let's go to the